You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and it's now time to get into some serious discussions. And today, uh, what we're talking about is the arrest of Omoyele Shore, publisher of Sahara Reporters and Human Rights Activist. Now, the federal government arraigned uh, Omoyele Shore and four others at a magistrate court in Wuse Zone 2 in Abuja, the nation's capital. He was arrested by the police for leading a protest on New Year's Eve in Abuja. He basically sent out a couple of tweets asking people to join him to <clears throat> protest uh, bad governance in Nigeria. He's now been arraigned on three charges of criminal conspiracy, unlawful assembly, and an attempt to incite others. He's pleaded not guilty to all of this and uh, will be joined by Mr. Mark Adebayo. He's a human rights activist and a public affairs analyst to help us discuss this. Good morning. And thanks for joining us again, Mr. Adebayo. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Thank you for having me. Um, always a pleasure. L l let me start by asking uh, for, for those who may not know the law well enough, what law uh, could Omoyele Shawari have uh, broken that necessitated his arrest? From your perspective, yes, of course, the, the uh, charges are criminal conspiracy, unlawful assembly, attempting to um, incite others. You know, that's, that's what the government has said. But how do you, you know, assess this? Uh, well, uh, it is no longer news that uh, the Buhari government is dictatorial, is draconian, and repressive. All these allegations of criminality against Showare are mere frivolities, you know, being given to the public by a confused government. We are a government that is unable to tackle insecurity, that is unable to tackle economic retrogression, that is unable to tackle social crisis. We have issues of banditry, terrorism, kidnapping, armed robbery, all manner of insecurity all over the country. And all this government could do was to attack five people who, are, who are, have a legitimate right under the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to protest and to have a peaceful assembly. They didn't have guns, they didn't have cutlasses, they didn't have bottles, they didn't have any dangerous weapon on them. But this government, because it likes to attack such targets, it went after, after them, five Nigerians, while you abandon your basic fundamental responsibility of protecting lives or properties of Nigerians, as enshrined in the Constitution. That went after five Nigerians who are protesting, Mr. who are protesting. Mr. They Adebayo. have a legitimate right under the Constitution to protest. Yeah, can you yes. hold on? I, I, I'm sure that we can agree that the government can um, tackle insecurity and at the same time um, find the space to also quell, you know, any type of incitement and um, also, you know, arrest lawbreakers. And so, you know, you, you know, from what you're saying, you're describing it as the government ignoring the security challenges, and instead going against those who are protesting against the government. Um, is there in any way, you know, the way that you can, may have seen it, that Shoare himself may have gone overboard this time uh, by calling for a protest, by um, inciting, you know, people against the government, and using uh, words as a particular word that he used um, um, in his um, tweet, uh, uh, using the word uprising, I think that's what it was, the word is. Um, you don't find anything wrong with these things. You know, a government that is intolerant of protest, that is tolerant of opposition, has no place in the democracy. So, um, for the language or the actions or the method that Shawari has chosen, to carry out his protests. It is still within his right as a, as a legitimate and bona fide Nigeria to protest against the injustices and the malgovernance in the society. So it is still within his democ uh, democratic right to, even, to gather people and to say, let us protest. And those who believe in him will follow him and do the protest. What we are saying is that we have bigger issues in Nigeria 
than for the government to so much, you know, use a sledgehammer to kill uh, a mosquito. It is a sign of an incompetent government. It is a sign of an unserious government. It is a sign of an undemocratic government Mr. for that kind of thing to happen. Mr. I do not see anything wrong in what Chowore has done in any way. Mr. I do not see any laws that he has, he has broken. I do not see any constitutional provision that Chowore has run against. To use the word he has gone overboard, I don't know what you mean by that he has gone overboard. Mr. I do not believe that. Uh, can we take a step back to evaluate this issue? When we do, we see that Shore has a political interest. In 2019, he ran for president under the platform of the African Action Congress, which he lost to President Muhammad Buhari. He alleged electoral fraud and then went on to organize what he explicitly calls a revolution. Now, for any government, and including Shore, if he becomes president tomorrow, would any government be, I dare say, maybe right to watch a so called revolution? grow under his watch? Oh, well, you see, revolution is in different perspectives. You know, it's not necessarily... Uh, I, I am a student of revolutionary history. I do know that if you are planning a, an armed revolution, you don't, you don't announce on the pages of newspapers, you don't announce on social media, eh? If, if you want to do a, a real revolution, you don't, you, don't, you don't expose yourself that way. It takes years of planning. It takes years of amassing logistics. It takes years of intelligence. Of sort of, Everything about it is surreptitious. But the day, on the day of the revolution that will take off, even the government will be taken on our ass. Not, not, not anybody who is planning a real revolution will not be announced on social media days and weeks before. And then... Makes him make himself so vulnerable to harass, to harassment, to attacks, and even elimination by the government in power. So the, the kind of revolution I believe Shogure was calling for was a social revolution, a revolution in the way Nigerians respond and react to the corruption in government, to the misrule of our country. It is a revolution. He's calling for a revolutionary change of attitude by Nigerians against the way we have been misruled. So if it is called for a revolution, you don't call for a revolution. You act a revolution. If it's going to be an armed revolution. He was calling for a social revolution, really, as far as I that's my interpretation of his call for a revolution now, for the revolutionary movement. Mr. Adebayo, I don't, you don't think the change you're asking for should be systemic? Is that, you don't think that rev that change he's asking for should be systemic? Do you think that's going to happen overnight, so we're, we're, you know, through a protest? Through a repeated series of protests? Do you think that's how that change would come? Well, I didn't get uh, that question very well. The line is not okay. uh, so clear okay. for me here. But uh, for me... I'll, I'll take that again. I'll take that again. You're saying Shores' uh, revolution calls and not uh, calls for arms or power grab. You're saying it's a social revolution. So I'm asking yeah. you, don't you think a social revolution, so to, so to speak, would happen systematically? Do you think a social revolution or an attitude change, even attitudinal change for human beings doesn't happen overnight? You don't stop smoking overnight. You don't stop, you know, you don't drop your vices overnight. I'm asking, don't you think that social revolution should happen through systemic change and not overnight, like, Shoreza, like you say Shoreza are fighting for? Well, 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 every movement, every social movement in society is systematic. So I still stand by my position that uh, the method being used, being employed by Shogure, is not a threat to this country. It is not a threat to this society. It is not a threat to this government. The only issue is that when you tell truth to power, you are going to have the kind of reactions we are having from the Buhari government. The same thing they are doing against the Bishop uh, Azam Matthew Kuka for expressing himself a true opinion that everybody knows is patriotic, is, is genuine, and is, is quite fundamental. So I do not see how Shogure's method is a threat to anything or to anybody at all.
All right, um, Mr. Debayo, the one thing, you know, that, you know, people, well, a lot of people may have missed out on is, uh, you know, how this in any way is connected with his bail conditions um, when he was granted bail. Uh, do you think that he may also have been breaking or going against his bail conditions by organizing um, or taking part in a protest? Uh, well, I think the... the a number of people that uh, it was restricted from a uh, meeting. Uh, now, in this on this occasion, now it was with only four people. I wouldn't know whether it was told not to meet with more than two or three people, but it was with four people. So there are five in number. So I wouldn't know whether it broke any of his bail conditions in that respect. Let me, and I, let, let me quickly share uh, from The Guardian, I believe, um, in 2019. It says, in, in addition, Shawari was ordered not to participate in any form of protest pending the determination of the suit. Um, but Shawari's lawyers uh, d described the conditions as stringent, leading to a fresh application for the court's consideration and review. That, that was, you know, sometime in 2019. Um, and so, you know, has he, or would you say, you know, that he has broken... Um, the law and has gone against the bail conditions that he was granted? Well, if he has broken any of the bail conditions, I think there are laid down procedures for, uh, for that to be taken care of, but not the way he was handled, or not the way he was uh, harassed, mishandled, or not the way he was assaulted, physically assaulted. They even drew blood from him. You know, these are the same people who run away from bandits. These are the same people who cannot confront uh, the the insecurity challenges that we have, they, they, they were, they were, they were too, uh, they, 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 they were too eager to, to suppress him. You know, they even inflicted physical injury upon him, bodily injury upon him. That is not how to undo. If somebody has broken a bail condition, that is not how to undo the matter. That's the, that's the thing. And in any case, you will recall that uh, many in the human rights community were, you know, seriously criticized the, the, bail, the terrible bail conditions that was given to him. Maybe breaking that part of the bail conditions is part of him also protesting against the bail conditions, you know? So I, I still see that the government, I still say that the government overreacted. I still see, I still say, I still state clearly that the government overreacted. You don't need to go that far. That's, that's, that's my own belief. All right. you know, four, five people protesting, and then you need to unleash the whole security apparatus on them. And, and that, that is correct. I, I want you to also quickly speak on uh, the Nigerian government's stereotype approach towards protesters. Um, the government doesn't seem to have a change in attitude towards, you know, the, the idea of protesting at, at all. Uh, the only time from what we've seen that protesters are allowed are when they are protesting pro-government or against, um, you know, anti-government protesters. Those aren't, you know, arrested or tear gassed or anything. Um, so what are your quick thoughts, you know, on why the government doesn't seem to be changing its attitude towards um, peaceful protesting? Well, it's, it's quite unfortunate. You know, the NSAS movement, everybody thought that the NSAS movement would have taught the government a lesson in how not to undo protesters. But no lesson has been learned. And you see that the president came out clearly to say that he will not tolerate any form of protest again. In what democracy, under what democracy does the president say that? The president has been purportedly elected in a democratic uh, process. And you heard what the IGP has been saying after the NSAS uh, protest. You know, emboldening his, uh, his men that they should defend themselves, they should do this, they should do that. So they took that as a license to shoot, to kill, to return to where what the police were protesting against. It is unfortunate that the NSAS movement, you know, ended prematurely, abruptly, and unfatally. It did not achieve its purpose before Udlops never do well. I judge the good you know, uh, plans of the Nigerian youth to now blackmail the NSAS movement and uh, 
allowed it to be ended so prematurely because it was yet to achieve its fundamental purposes before it ended prematurely and suddenly. You know, so that is why we are having this type of thing. You know, in, uh, uh, in uh, I think last week or so in Bayesa or or Crossover, you know, a, a policeman shot a cricket, a cricket driver dead because of hundred naira. You know, so the answers movement did not achieve its purpose before it was ended in a brutal way by the Nigerian military. So the government is not likely to change its attitude toward peaceful protesters. And once you do not allow peaceful protests, what you are doing is that you are encouraging violent uprising against the government. You know, look at what is happening with IPOP now. IPOP was not carrying arms. But it was designated a, a terrorist organization. Now they have set up the Eastern Security Network and they are carrying arms. That is what happens when you repress peaceful protests. This government is a poor student of history, it's a poor student of politics. It does not know how to run a democratic governance. Well, if, you, if they continue with the way they are acting against you, we are likely to have another armed uh, group in the country. And they cannot cope with it. Uh -huh. They are unable to cope with the one we have in the Northeast now. How would they be able to cope with uh, another one? All right. Uh -huh. Eastern Security Network now is now armed. Do you want to have another one in the Southwest? They cannot, they cannot handle it. Mr. Adebayo, uh, uh, and yeah. Sarge, we've seen the power of the collective voice throughout history to change governments, to change society. I mean, there's the NTAS protest you mentioned. SARS was disbanded. It's been changed to SWAT now. So many other changes. Some policemen um, allegedly sacked. We've seen the, uh, the French Revolution, 1789. We've seen the George Floyd protest, May 2020. So many instances throughout history where people came out and spoke. So why do you think... It's different, so it's, it seems different for Shawale's revolution now. Is it because this protest, so to speak, has a face? Because if you see the, the trajectory or the, the, the history, these other protests never had one single person coming out. It was a collective issue, like the NSAS protest, insisting yeah. they had no leader. Is it because this has a face? Or is it because it had a political ambition, so people are looking at it as a power grab? I mean, what, why, would you, why do you think revolution now has failed to pick up and, and take off like uh, other protests throughout history, if societal uh, change is what you say he is go going for? You, you, you see, um, the 1789 revolution, the French Revolution, and the 1920 Bolshevik Revolution. Pardon? Go ahead, please. I can hear you. Hello? I yes, can go hear ahead, you, Mr. Um, Mr. Is that a question for me? Yes, please. Go ahead. Okay, now, you see the 1789 French Revolution that you referred to, and the 1920, 1917 and 1920 Bolshevik revolutions of, of Russia were a reaction to the injustices of, the, of their societies. So every revolution is a reaction against injustices of the society. And now, the fact that Chore contested for presidency did, has not removed his right of citizenship to protest against the injustices of his society. We should not you know, dwell on the fact that, oh, he, he, because he, he, he contested and lost, and he was looking for uh, extra legal means to remove the government so that he, be, he could become president. No, I, I don't even see him having that kind of capacity. So the, uh, we, the, the fact that he is a politician, he, he contested for presidency, and now protesting, it, 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 it does not remove his rights of citizenship to protest against what he sees as wrong in his society. The 1789 revolution, unfortunately, was hijacked. You know, if you look at it critically, most revolutions will later be hijacked by the conservative elements within the society, whether in the military or in the, in the community of civilians, you know. So, uh, so everything is a result of a process. Everything begins as a, pro as a process and we end as a process. Even a protest is as a result as, as, of a process. And this a process, look at the NSAS movement. The government is blaming the organizers of the NSAS movement. They have, they have frozen the account. Some of them were jailed, were, were arrested and uh, detained. Of course, they have been released now. Uh, now, 
they, they, they are blaming the NSAS movement organizers, not blaming the source, which is the Nigeria police that is unable to respect the fundamental human rights of Nigerians, our right to dignity, our right to personality, our rights to own property. They are unable to respect that and then push the youth to the war and they reacted. You are now dealing with the reaction of the youth. You are blaming the youth for reacting against their right. you know, extra judicial killings, detention, extortion. You are not blaming the youth. Right. You Mr. cannot blame Mr. them Mr. Adibayo, um, in 30 seconds, please share with us how you think this will play out in court um, when he, of course, uh, applies for bail once again, along with oh, just, four others. I, I just want to hope that uh, the, the, uh, the legal system, the court system, will be able to handle the matter in a way that will not be seen to have mortgaged the right of Nigerians to protest. I am hoping that our confidence in the court uh, will, not be, will not be smashed. All right. Mark Adibaya, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for speaking with us. And we hope that we can bring you in again when we have uh, uh, more uh, details from you know, this case. Always my pleasure. Thank you again. Right. Have a great um, day. Um, pretty interesting, you know, perspective, you know, and, it, you know, I, I read a lot of the views online yesterday and uh, some of the things that you mentioned about him running for president, those things always come up, you know, as part of the conversations. Yes, there's a lot of social media voices. There's a lot of people who um, are really just existing on social media, you know, to attack, you know, without actually, you know, being uh, logical. Yes. Um, but, you know, you would always still see the people who say, well, you flattered your bill conditions, you asked to not protest. Uh, there's Even those broke who, curfew yeah, uh, yeah. conditions. Oh, well, it, I, don't, I don't think you should be arrested, <laughs> <laughs> arrested for that. But, um, you know, there's a lot of those voices, a lot of, um, you know, opinions. And we hope that the court, you know, which, you know, always would have the final say, will uh, do the right thing. You know, if he has actually broken some of his bail conditions, then, you know, there's really not much that the Nigerian people can do. You know, and yes, I, I agree that the Nigerian government can fight insecurity and also do its job yes, when people yes, break the law. Yes. And for the bigger picture, it's sure today, it could be someone else tomorrow. You know, so the thing is, I think the government needs to find a balance between addressing dissent against the government and, you know, not infringing on their fundamental human rights. Yes, I, I totally agree. And, you know, like he also said, if there is a re revolution planned, um, we should have capable security forces capable security um, a network. We should have uh, capable hands in those places to be able to know when this is a likely threat or this is just, you know, a couple of, you know, noisemakers standing on the street. Indeed. Um, we shouldn't, you know, you know, like he also said, you know, use a sledgehammer, you know. On, on a hand, fly. You know. All right. We'll take a short break. When we come back, more into these conversations this Tuesday morning. 774,000 jobs. Are you one of those who has been recruited? Will you be earning 20,000 naira for the next three months? Uh, we'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us here on The Breakfast.